Hi all, welcome to the opening vodcast uh, on our fourth unit, uh, cell reproduction. So in this first one, we're gonna look at uh, an overview of cell reproduction and then work our way into the process of mitosis. So let's get right into things. So we gotta do a little, little breakdown here first and talk about what chromosomes are. Chromosomes are pretty important um, and they are a combination of DNA with associated protein. That is you know, our big definition of chromosome there is, you know, it's not just the DNA piece, it's the proteins that wrap around it because this way it allows the DNA to organize itself uh, much more efficiently. So this is basically a chromosome here. Um, and it is particular, this is a duplicated chromosome. That's one of the things in mitosis before the cell actually divides, it's gotta double up all of its chromosomes. And we have very specific names for chromosomes as it's going through the process of division. We start with a single chromosome. When it duplicates, it's still one chromosome, but we call one a chromatid and we call its other its sister chromatid. So this is gonna be a little bit like an immersion language where we're gonna be using these new terms a lot. This would be an actual electron micrograph of a duplicated chromosome. So what you're seeing is the protein in the DNA that gets super coiled. This is, you know, again, to take it kind of slow with the terminology first, duplicated chromosomes is still a single chromosome but in that duplicated state, one of them is a chromatid, the other one is its sister. We often will use the female tense um, in the process of mitosis and meiosis. Once that chromosome separates, okay, so the cell's getting ready to divide and it splits, then it goes back to be, being two separate chromosomes. Now that's gonna be in two new cells. Sister chromatids are usually identical because the DNA will replicate itself ideally identically, although sometimes mistakes are made. And when a chromosome is duplicated, it's joined at what we call the centromere, okay? That centromere is that point where it's really, really tightly joined together, this condensed point here. So here's a little bit of the structure. So here's a little bit of the structure from that breakdown of the idea of the DNA wrapping around chromosomes, which then wrap around themselves, okay? The proteins that we wrap around are known as histones, Okay, so super, super condensed, super coiled, and if I were to really unwind them, I would work my way down um, to the actual DNA wrapped around what we call a histone protein. And it spools it together and is able to organize it into this really, really super coiled state. One wrapping is referred to as a nucleosome. It's where you get the DNA and it's looped twice, okay, around eight different histones and so that together is known as a nucleosome. And then we have um, what we call the kinetochore, and this is at the actual centromere, we get this sort of docking site because it's at the centromere where it's going to attach to microtubules as a track or a, you know, a roadway, if you will, for the chromosome to move during actual separation of the cell itself. All right, so again, a little bit more on the structure. There's your nucleosome, okay, there's the eight, Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight's hiding behind. Um, there's the eight histones, DNA wraps around twice. There's your nucleosome. This would be it in more of a space filling model, okay? So there you have all your eight proteins, the double helix of the DNA wrapped right around it. It's pretty cool looking. And all of these chromosomes um, we find in particularly in sexually reproducing organisms and in mostly um, a lot of organisms go this route, um, they all come in pairs. And so you're gonna find even numbers. And we have like fruit fly, it's kind of like the poster child animal of genetics. Um, the fruit fly has um, eight chromosomes, four pairs. We have uh, 46 total chromosomes, we have 23 pairs, and we're gonna be talking more and more about this as we work through. So then we can actually, during division, take these chromosomes, find them, and match them up. We can create a karyotype.
and that's where we can look at them and then they get you know marked and stained chromosome numbers in cells all right so i just mentioned about how that they are one of the ways in which we can identify a species they're very specific somatic cells remember the word some we've talked about this before ribosome chromosome um, lysosome <laughs> somatic um, it means body okay and that's what that means so these are body cells so like our skin cells or lung cells or kidney cells okay so a fruit fly has eight here's just some fun facts for you 14 for an onion a white fish which we're gonna look at in the lab they have 80 humans we have 46 and this is the karyotype for a human okay this one happens to be a boy, and uh, I'm gonna let you think for a little bit of how, you know, if you can figure out why I know that that's a boy. Pairing, and that pair has a very particular name. They're called a homologous pair of chromosomes, okay? And what that means is that they are similar in their length, okay? They are similar in the types of genes that are found on them. Um, they are similar in the location of their centromere. And for humans, we number, and for all animals actually, we number them from longest to shortest, and that's how we number chromosomes. So our chromosome number one is our longest chromosome. And everybody has chromosome number one, but they all come in pairs. Why? Because we have a mom and a dad. So dad, one chromosome, mom, one chromosome, that makes your pair, and voila, you have it. So, okay, that's how it works. Dad contributes 23, you know, one half of every pair that he has. Mom contributes 23, one half of every pair that she has. And here you are. <laughs> so that's kind of how it works. So there's just a little reminder. Of, so there's just a little reminder of what homologous means. So you can um, take that down, just similar in size, centromere placement, the type of genes. And so mitosis, what's its job? This is kind of important, okay? Mitosis is the process by which we take the chromosomes, arrange them in a way, so when the cell actually separates, each new cell contains only one of every chromosome type. We don't want there to be any mix up here. Each new cell must contain the correct and exact chromosome number, so it has to be all, okay? So cells, every cell we have has the instructions to make an entire individual, okay? So every single cell you have has all the information on how to make a human, okay? Because we only st we started as one cell, 10 trillion now, okay? So that's something that's really key. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about the cell cycle, okay? The cell cycle is a pretty interesting um, event. It's the, it's not, I don't want to call it a life cycle of the cell, but it's certain stages we can peg um, as a cell goes through different points in time. The cell cycle will vary um, and it begins with sort of what we call interphase. Interphase is the cell doing its job, okay? The cell is in the process of just living. It's its normal business mode. It's not really getting ready to um, to do, you know, to divide or anything yet. And we can break interphase down into three moments, okay? We have the G1 or the growth phase, okay? The first growth phase, and that's where it's just gonna get a little bit bigger. I want you to remember cell size and diffusion right now, okay? Remember that about why cells don't grow too big, okay? Eventually, the cell is going to reach a point where it's going to need to begin the process of division, and it enters what we call the S phase. This is synthesis. This is the time when the DNA actually replicates itself. And then we hit the second growth phase after that, and that's the preparation of the cell for actually division. It's going to mobilize organelles into the right location. It's just going to get everything ready. Okay, so those are the three steps of interphase. Haven't even talked about mitosis yet. Okay, and really all mitosis is, is the separation of the nucleus and this are the nuclear contents, all right? So again, interphase. Longest time normally of the cell, um, we break that part down into three. So now we're ready. Mitosis is about to happen. The division of the nuclear contents, all right? And there's a little bit of a difference between the way a plant and an animal cell go through this process, and we're gonna see it in the lab. So we've just exited out interphase, the cell is getting ready to divide. 
Okay, so the first part, and this is just, this is the acronym, PMAT. Each letter stands for one of the phases of mitosis. The first phase, okay, bearing in mind, DNA has already duplicated, all the chromosomes are in their duplicated state. We hit prophase. Okay, prophase, the cell has lost the nucleus, the nuclear envelope has disappeared, it's dissolved, it's vanished, and all of the chromosomes are becoming um, visible now, okay? They're like condensing and they're now visible, but they're all still kind of scattered, okay? That's what happens in prophase. Then the cell moves into metaphase, where metaphase is all of those duplicated chromosomes lining up down the center of the cell, all right? So they, that's where we get the meta, means middle, okay? It's lining up right down the middle, and you can see this right down the middle. Then anaphase kicks in. Anaphase is where we now have the chromosomes start to move towards the opposite pole, and they are being pulled apart. So those replicated chromosomes, each chromatid pulls apart from itself and heads towards the opposite pole, and you can see each one heading away. The final phase of mitosis is telophase, okay? So for telophase, we're now gonna begin to see the cell actually starting to divide. And by this point, the chromosomes are at very far opposite ends. The spindle still can be seen down the middle, and if you're an animal cell, okay, we would call that a cleavage furrow, where you get the um, cell membrane literally pinching in to be pulled apart. However, if I'm a plant cell, I can't really do that because you have this really pesky cell wall there. So instead of pinching in, the cell will start to build a cell wall down the center. And we call that the cell plate. And that's what happens. It builds the cell plate separating it Okay, where you still have it. So that's one of the major differences between plant and animal cells as it works through this process of metaphase. At that point, you get what we call cytoplasmic division, cytokinesis occurs, and voila, at the end of it, we get two brand new daughter cells. That's what we refer to them as daughter cells. The nucleus is gonna reform. All of the DNA and the chromosomes are going to just unwind and loosen from that super coiled state. And you now have two brand new cells into the G1 phase of the next cell cycle. That's it. And I've gone from having one cell into having two. Psst, don't look now. One of your cells just did that. Whoa. <laughs> so. That's all it is. So following that, just to remind ourselves, once we've finished mitosis, we move into the process of cell division, um, which is where we're gonna actually divide the cytoplasm, everything in it, um, and we get cytokinesis. Remember, kinesis means movement, kinetic, cyto means cell, cell movement. And just as a, again, little reminder, plants will form a cell plate down the center, animals create a cleavage furrow of the cell membrane and pinch in. And then we get microfilament-aided movement. This is where though that MTOC really comes into play during this point. Super, super important that that happen. Um, and this is where the chromosomes run along and the, those microfilaments are really key and critical in helping to mobilize and actually pull the cell apart. So there's this last little bit here I just wanna briefly mention, um, a process called apoptosis. And this is programmed cell death. Um, cells aren't meant to constantly divide all the time indefinitely, um, otherwise they would be considered immortal cells. Um, our cells sometimes have to kick the bucket. And we've had cells go and take some for the team sometime. I would just like to point this out. At one point in time, you built cells all in between your fingers. And so you can see on the scanning micrograph of this embryo, all of this area here, okay? These are all cells dividing as they build your skin, build your bones, everything in there inside that little embryo, okay? We had flippers, <laughs> or what it looked like. Well, those cells in between our fingers actually, you know, they took one for the team and were signaled and programmed 
to die. And in dying, left us with space so that we can go like that. And so we're appreciative of that, honestly. Um, but sometimes things go a little haywire and the signal never gets sent or there's something faulty in the signal. And this is um, sort of the, the basement foundation of cancer. Cancer is uncontrollable cell growth. And what I mean by growth is constant cell division without ever turning off. And oftentimes cells are constantly signaled into the division process. They basically lose their identity um, and never function the way they're supposed to and become cancerous. So we'll mention this a little bit, do a little talk about it, but overall, that's the process of mitosis, so have a um, lovely night, and I want to just um, put your attention to the webpage because underneath the vodcast, I'll have some pictures of the, you know, some of these cells in their mito you know, mitotic phases. So have a great night. We'll catch you guys later. Take it easy.